And then this is where something interesting happens because we just hired 25 men for free. Our gold has not gone down and we can just repeat this process over and over again. And very interestingly, we've now just hired 250 free brigands for the cost of absolutely nothing. These are enough soldiers to get us through the entire game pretty much. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffy Brit and today we're playing the wonderful game of King's Bounty 2. This is a brand new release, which is kind of the weird hybrid you'd get if you combined an RPG game like Skyrim with the combat of Heroes of Might and Magic. And you know what? It is exactly my cup of tea. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I love it. Best of all, I'm even being paid to play a game that I would have probably played anyway. So thank you very much, developers, for just giving me free money. Speaking of being given free money as well, that brings us to today's video. As guess what, ladies and gentlemen, a brand new release of a game being given to me by a game developer. You know it's got exploits. Of course it does. And that's exactly why we're playing it today, as we take this very scrubby level six mercenary character and make him the richest man in the universe. How are we going to do it? Well, by a few cheesy means of hiring ridiculously overpowered units, power leveling ourselves, making our entire army unstoppable, but most importantly, becoming fabulously wealthy by not spending any money when hiring troops. That's right, the biggest drawback of trying to lead an army in this game is that whilst you can recruit infinite quantities of men, it's always going to cost you money. If you're marching a squad of 10 archers and 40 peasants into fight a gigantic army of undead skeletons, then you can guarantee that they're going to want some compensation for being hired. But what if instead of actually paying your army, you just offer to pay them in exposure bucks? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be hiring the strongest military force this world has ever seen for free, because that's how to truly perfectly balance a video game. Now, welcome to this really beautiful world. You know what? Honestly, it's a very nice looking game for a turn-based RPG. So where are we, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I've basically bypassed all of the tutorial content because you don't need to know about that. And instead, we've arrived at a wonderful area where we are now basically free to explore and start breaking the game. Now, the interesting thing about an RPG like this is that you can funnel your characters down several important routes. Want to make them into an incredibly powerful mage who can cast these brilliant spells? Sure, yeah, you can do that. Want to create just the most powerful army in the world where your soldiers hit really, really strongly? Sure, yeah, you can do that as well. Want to heal your units and revive them using a mix of magic and just heroism? Then yeah, sure, you could do that. Or alternatively, you can become an anarchist and just spend the entire game trying to accumulate wealth by scamming merchants and then eventually somehow turning all of your men into vampires by using lifesteal. Yes, this is perfectly balanced. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now, the thing is, as you can probably guess, I love making money, which means my military forces need to basically be comprised of the most untrustworthy sausages in the universe. And no, I'm not talking about your average coffee drinker. You see, my entire military force is basically comprised of all of the anarchy units in the game. Most importantly, my key unit is this humble little brigand. What is a brigand? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he's just your average peasant farmer who realized if he had a wooden club and a shield, he could probably make more money. Consequently, like every unit in the game, he has some really fun passive skills. His passive skills, however, are pretty darn powerful. Because this boy is a robber. Basically, every time we get a victory in battle, the reward is increased by 3%, and evasion is increased by 2 for every other robber unit in the allied army. Basically, we get a whole bunch of these bad boys together and the more robbers we actually have running around our army the more rewards we're going to be getting get up to seven robbers that's a seven percent increase on battle rewards these boys very very fun and powerful so let's say you wanted to hire a lot more units but of course you're limited with six thousand gold and armies are expensive let's say we want to buy ourselves more of these nice powerful brigands well guess what they're 240 gold each that's incredibly expensive so what do we do well we don't actually buy our brigands here instead we move our brigands into the reserve section and now look at our lovely brigands here. Now the thing is you can't buy units into the reserve section. As you can see, I click on the units and I can't buy them. Go to the standard army and look, I can buy these units, but of course they cost gold. However, because you can't buy units in the reserve section, you know, they don't cost any money in this menu because that makes sense. However, what if you could buy units in the reserve section? Well, by simply right clicking on this boy right here, you can hire him 25 times. As you can see, this is going to cost us 6,000 gold. This is going to make our gold go down to pretty much nothing. That's devastating, so we're going to buy it. And then this is where something interesting happens, because we just hired 25 men for free. Our gold has not gone down, and we can just repeat this process over and over again. And very interestingly, we've now just hired 250 free brigands for the cost of absolutely nothing. These are enough soldiers to get us through the entire game, pretty much. Now, in a game where losing units is ridiculously expensive and not something that you want to do, this is an incredibly powerful exploit. Now, we'll just move some 
of these men to the active army and well bam look we have our group of seven brigands. These lovely boys cost us absolutely nothing. That's how fantastic they are. Now we're just going to also hire some other units like say some more wolves here. So I'll hire 22 wolves. Fantastic stuff. And oh look at these horses. Ah oh, yes these expensive raider units. They cost 850 each. That's ridiculously expensive but naturally they're nice and powerful. Only downside is we sadly can't have many of these in the army because I just don't have enough leadership for them. But there we go. Well, bam, our military forces are now more powerful than ever. Now, this is really good, but it doesn't just work with anarchy units. No, no, no. You see, it works with just about every unit in the game, which is immensely useful, especially when you're hiring expensive boys like these. Look at these fancy swordsmen. My goodness, costing so much money. You know what? I should probably actually top up my archer pile. Why not? They are relatively useful. And I guess I should probably also go and pick myself up some more ghouls and skeletons because these boys are also very jazzy. But now we have a pretty much near unstoppable army that we can just spam and throw at our enemies over and over again without any fear of losing. And this means we can actually spend our gold on, you know, other useful items. But in order to have more money to buy some nice bits of equipment with, I'm actually going to sell all of the rubbish that I have in my inventory. Wabam, there we go, it's all sold. As well as this travelling hat and this crossbow and wabam went up to 9,000 gold. This is very nice. Now with all of my amazing money, I can do some pretty incredible things. For a start, I could actually try and buy some of these really expensive units here like these wind spirits or fancy golems they're great fun but the issue is they're super duper expensive and also in my opinion just not worth it in the slightest so instead we're just going to top up our supply of healers to make sure that we never run out of them all entirely for free fantastic right now i'm going to go and see if i can actually afford an item which is incredibly overpowered and broken and we're bam right here we have a very very special little merchanty man now this merchanty man sells some very incredible gear i mean of course we don't have a spare fifty thousand gold lying around but if we did we could buy our ourselves some of this legendary armor. Like for example this insane item here which allows your units to attack twice in one turn. This is ridiculous. It allows you to have an entire army of ranged boys who are basically gatling guns and will melt an entire enemy army before they can even get close. But what I'm really interested in is this item right here, the poison flask. It's a nice little item that we can just add to ourselves which gives us plus 5 warfare but most importantly an increase of 15% damage for all anarchy units. Guess what ladies and gentlemen, my entire military roster is just anarchy based units so who needs this boring magical rosary charm ah it's a load of rubbish right now we're going to basically start a very simple quest all about gaining some special chickens now we have a few options basically when it comes to this chicken recovery quest we can either fight the evil gang that is sat on top of the chickens or we can gain some points in anarchy by talking to magistrate tweet the reasoning behind this is very simple the more anarchy points we get the faster we can invest our talent points into these higher skills of anarchy basically the more of an evil sauce that you are the more evil things you can do and that's absolutely something that i love all right so time to tell this man about the chickens all right there we go i've gained some anarchy points as well as a little bit of gold for solving this quest here a point in anarchy is very important indeed all right now i've got some fun news ladies and gentlemen i've been exploring the dungeons of the capital and i've made my way over to this uh, guard squadron which is basically about to get ambushed by a whole bunch of undead now um we don't really need to do anything because hey they're all going to die and now we get to fight a whole bunch of angry undead boys here they are Look at them, we've got a couple of zombies, a couple of skelly boys, should be good fun. Now in this fight we are facing a strong enemy, this is meant to be a bit of a challenge. There's one giant skeleton, some regular chumpy zombies, these skeletons are also very good but luckily for us, skeletons have one major weakness and that is that they melt to fire. So naturally we're going to be attacking them with a large amount of flamey boys. So let the fighting begin. Alright I think we're pretty much ready to go, let's actually start this fight. Now immediately our cavalry does get to do the first attack of the game. Now our Cav is not very strong because of course he is just one little boy so he doesn't have many hit points but it's okay because we can cast spells on him. So we're going to use him to go punch up some zombies here. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Good stuff. He gets a crit off. The zombies get damaged. Lovely stuff. Now it's up to the ghouls here to do some magical stuff and they can just wipe out this entire unit of skeletons in one go because you know they're insanely powerful and very terrifying. My entire army is now pretty much completely and utterly overpowered despite the fact that the game believes they're not. These zombies here as well once again we can just walk right on up to them, completely murder them and they're gone. Very, very nice. Now it's up to the flaming arrow boys to basically cause a bit of chaos as well. I'm going to give them a nice critical attack bonus. They should do fantastic and then get them to set this giant skeleton on fire. Now this giant skeleton is very powerful and has a huge amount of health but hopefully flames are going to weaken him. Oh now their skeletons attacked my skeletons but naturally they get a little bit of an opening advantage and they do some damage but it's okay because we can increase the armor of my skelly boys and now fight back and take basically no hits. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Ah, 
far, things are going fantastically well. Even though they do have a gigantic skeleton of death. Oh my god, he got an additional turn! What is this? No! Oh! It's like Heroes of Might Magic, basically. Where if your unit basically passes a whole bunch of luck checks, they're able to have another turn. But of course, my anarchy boys aren't exactly very happy because they're having to work with these archers here. And archers, you know, they're basically the exact opposite of anarchy. Now, normally I wouldn't do an attack here because these ghouls are just going to get massacred by this giant skeleton. But remember, my army is unlimited and consequently it's completely fine if all of the ghouls die. Now we're just going to start surrounding this giant skeleton here and stabbing him up a good bunch. And oh dear, he's just critical hitted all of my ghouls to death. Now that is, come on, that's too naughty. You're not allowed to do that. That's wrong. Okay, horsey boy, I'm wishing you good luck. Please don't die to a spontaneous critical hit. Of course he gets a critical hit off. And what is this? What is this game? Please. Oh, well, you know, I lose two units, but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, we can just summon them for free. And hey, everyone gets experience, except of course the poor units that died. But eh, we don't talk about the people who died. Now, we do have the opportunity to hold H and basically heal up these units here. Effectively summon two more skeletons out of thin air. But of course, this costs us 174 gold. Why not would we do this when we can just simply back on out of the combat and pull the skeletons out of our reserve army for free? Now that's how to fight. And there we go, glorious quest completed. We can now leave this area, knowing that our military forces are incredibly powerful. And the best thing about the end of this quest, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we get more anarchy points because we have the option to side with the lovely guard captain or the slightly dubious Ministry of Intelligence. Naturally, we're going to go for the dubious boys who will give me more anarchy. There we go. We gain two anarchy points there, which is fantastic. And oh yes, our talents have increased. Oh, we're up to four anarchy. This is wonderful. Now, what do we do here? Well, we're going to naturally pick up trophies level two. This is going to increase our victory rewards by 10%. A very perfectly balanced upgrade indeed, especially when you do a lot of fighting. And now we actually need to resupply our army because guess what there's even more space for men now as we can now have eight brigands inside of our forces and two horsey boys oh yes two horsey boys oh this is fantastic you know what ladies and gentlemen the boffins at spivko have got a fantastic offer for you today that's right the first 10,000 people to like this video will be given a bow and mandatorily forced into military service to fight dragons most of you won't survive and none of you will be getting paid so hey why not sign up today and like the video it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be set on fire mostly, but it's an opportunity nonetheless. Right, our next mission is relatively simple. Travel halfway across the map to secure grain for a refugee camp from friends, or alternatively talk to some kind of dodgy brigand at the bottom of the hill and source bread via dubious means. And uh, naturally we're going to go with the latter because that means we get anarchy points. But of course in order to get there, I have to fight this supposedly strong enemy of a large quantity of anarchy brigands. Look at these lovely deserters. Oh, how I'd love to have some deserters in my army. These incredible robber boys. All right, we shall fight them. All right, it's round one, and naturally the eagles are coming, ladies and gentlemen, which is never a fun prospect, because eagles are powerful. Oh, and also some horsey boys will be vaguely wandering in our direction, but it's okay, because we can attack the horsey boys. We did 171 damage to their 117. This is entirely just because we have incredible bonuses against them. All right, we're going to have the ghouls do, oh my goodness, 331 damage, that's incredible. Uh, to that unit there, lovely stuff. That's that all sorted out, then we can just move the ghouls up. We've got some angry spear deserters here, lovely job. Oh, of course, yes, we can set the deserters on fire. Lovely. And after hastening our skelly boys, we can actually just go and finish off the horses, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now, this is how to properly do combat. They have a whole bunch of angry anarchy boys. They're just honestly the best units in the game. Because look, horse is dead. Now, yes, our skeletons are going to get shot at by the archers, but skeletons take basically no damage from arrows. So it's actually fantastic for us. All right, now to just kill the deserters. You could say they're about to get their just desserts. <laughs> oh, 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 God, that's the the worst. Oh my goodness, oh, we are just massacring these archers here. Oh yes, there's hardly any of them left. This has gone fantastically well. I do like their double shot ability, but yeah, because it is nice and powerful. So I can't wait to actually steal some of these archers myself because they look very fun. And yes, of course, our ghouls have still got it and can critical hit just about anything. And there we go, fantastic. The battle is won with minimal casualties on our side. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very challenging fight ahead of us against a supposedly deadly enemy. Look at all of these trolls. These are very, very very dangerous animals. Naturally, we're going to go and try and murder them. Now, with our 27 warfare statistic, they are still rated as being deadly, but don't worry, we're going to do our best to try and murder them. It's going to take a fair bit, but I reckon we can do it. Now, fighting trolls is going to be incredibly dangerous here, but I think we should still be able to do it, especially if we're able to focus down the trolls all in one turn. This is going to be our entire battle strategy. It's going to cost us a lot of soldiers, and it's going to be exceedingly reckless, but it's okay, because recklessness is going to win us this battle. Some of you 
may die, but that's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to make. Ah, oh, right, fantastic. And now we're actually going to be able to finish off this troll in one turn. Glorious stuff, my skelly boys. Oh, I'm so good at fighting. Now what we're going to do here is to start slowing down this troll, but oh my goodness, of course he gets a critical hit off. Look at all of the damage he's done. That's insane. Well, we should still be able to finish him off this turn, even if it's going to cost us most of our men. He even heals up. This is why I hate him, my goodness. And please don't kill the wolves. Oh my goodness, stunning clap. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm temporarily going to make my brigands incredibly strong and powerful and have them stand in front of these trolls. Why not? This will be fantastic. All right, defensive time. Yes, I think we did 266 damage back. That's actually incredible. Now when we shoot them, we might kill one of them. Yes, we did. Glorious success. Oh yes, the brigands are doing so well. Look at the amount of damage they can do. It's truly glorious. It doesn't really matter that, that sure, the troll's healing. We can still do damage back to him. And that's glorious victory, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yes, what was that? Deadly enemy game? I think not. The best thing is this game is actually really surprisingly difficult. We've just basically built a really good counter to everything the game can throw at us. And sure, yes, we could spend 666 gold healing up our army, but that's going to cost us a huge amount of our reward. So naturally, we're not going to, and instead just replace them with our unlimited supply of dudes. There we go, wolves, run on in and resupply your fallen brethren. Lovely stuff. Ah, now it looks like there were no casualties. So, after an evil expedition and stealing of a land deed, we're now in a fantastic situation where we're able to hire a a brand new type of unit. Say hello to the mercenaries, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, are they not fantastic. Anarchy-based horsemen that are basically the cut above these raiders here. And now we've also gained access to these free archers, meaning it's finally time for us to get rid of these regular human archers. They are, you know, just pretty much useless. So now I just need to actually get rid of some garbage from my reserve section. Like say these swordsmen here, my goodness. So now I just need to buy myself some archers. And I'm also just going to hire myself some additional ghouls to fill out my army slots because uh, these guys are also very powerful. So I'm just going to buy up a nice Nice large amount of them. There we go, 99. Should keep our forces relatively well stocked. And now look at our incredible army, comprised entirely of these anarchy units. And now it's an army of entirely anarchy. This gives us a nice bonus. There is a 10% chance every turn for every unit to get an additional turn of combat, basically making them incredibly powerful. Because who doesn't like doing double damage? Now, interestingly, I found another way of gaining anarchy points, which is basically to return a pig to this senile old man here. And uh, that's actually going to somehow increase our anarchy and theft because the senile old man actually sold the pig to that man over there but hey we've recovered it to give it to him fantastic so there we go i've gained one anarchy point as well as a whole bunch of gold what a glorious way of settling some pig theft and now i think have i actually leveled up no i still haven't leveled up but we have now unlocked the second level of anarchy here which means we can now gain lifesteal as well as also the ability to gain more gold from selling to merchants now i think we can probably exploit the game by just sinking a load of points into this you know what, i'm actually going to do that i'm going to redistribute my talent points by basically sinking them into this this, 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 and then I guess also into this lovely stuff. Fantastic bonuses. Of course, we now no longer need these morale penalty bonuses because our army loves being anarchic. Now I just need to become even more powerful. Oh no, now once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're facing a very strong enemy. Look at this ancient bear, gigantic eagles, and oh, large quantities of wolves. Oh, however, will we win this fight? Oh, it's all lost, devastating, spooky, scary. Well, luckily it's spooky and scary, and I have skeletons, the perfect combination. And now I actually think it's time for us to fight. Now naturally the eagles are going to come over first because eagles are eagles. And my goodness we were able to murder them and of course heal bugs of life stealing. Basically meaning it is almost impossible for us to now die. Anyway let us murder this last eagle. Glorious success. All eagles are now dealt with. And we heal. Oh this is just the most powerful thing in the universe. How is life steal balanced? Oh great though they are going to keep sending wolves after me and I guess these wolves are going to kill my horses. Now we're going to try and do some damage with these archers here and do some fun barbed arrows to start murdering these wolves. Good stuff. Next up, our ghouls here are going to do about 400 damage to this gigantic ancient mega bear. And sure, yeah, we take some damage, but it's all okay. Oh my goodness, but apparently the ancient mega bear can just heal. Great. Well, I guess I'm going to lose quite a few of my ghouls, but it's okay. All right, now it is time to start murdering this ancient bear. This ancient bear is insane, but don't worry. We're going to crush its armor, do a whole bunch of damage to it, and eventually we will murder this giga bear. But otherwise, giga bear, good lord, is he giga. Thank goodness we have so many chumpy brigands to kill everything. Oh, and fantastic. Giga Bear is dead. Glorious success for everyone. Not too many casualties either, which is always lovely. And oh yes, that's a good amount of gold. All right, now it's up into these mysterious catacombs we go to find some ancient magical loot. And eventually I think we're going to be able to actually start saving up enough money to buy these legendary bits of armor, which are completely utterly broken. To show off just how powerful our army has now become, our ghouls are now pretty much able to one hit just about every single enemy in the game. Uh, it is kind of getting a little bit ridiculous how much damage they can all do. 
group. These golems, they're not the strongest unit in the game, but they're by no means the weakest. And heck, I even think our skeletons here are able to almost one hit. Actually, they can do 200 to 300 damage, and in turn, they'll take 11 to 32 damage. These are just some insanely powerful boys. There you go, 300 damage done, 26 damage taken. They are terrifying. My goodness. Well, what a glorious battle. We only lost one single unit. That is how strong we have now become. My goodness. And sure, yes, I can spend 117 gold healing up that unit, but why do that when I can just summon them for free? Alright, onwards with our glorious quest for money and profits. Oh, would you look at this, ladies and gentlemen? We've discovered ourselves a very strong enemy. Ooh, spooky. This is going to be one heck of a jazzy fight. It's gonna take a fair bit, but don't worry, we're gonna be able to do it. Alright, let's do this fight, ladies and gentlemen. I think we've got this one in the bag. It's a bit of an attack the fort scenario, which isn't exactly the best for our men, but don't worry, by positioning ourselves in great locations, we should be able to have an advantage. Oh my goodness, immediately my horse boys could attack these brigands and do four to six damage. That's amazing. You know, I'm gonna give this critical hit chance increase to these raiders and uh, should make them even more powerful. Right, now go and murder these brigands here. Charge, my friends. We receive 20 damage and we do 663. Ah, uh, that's completely unfair. Remember, this is a very strong enemy. Ooh, spooky. Okay, yeah, they got a lot of archers. I'll give them that. And their archers are probably gonna kill my archers, but hey, who even needs archers? Now, what I will do is send these ghouls up to finish up these brigands with a nice, lovely, easy one hit. Jazzy stuff indeed. In come the deserters for us to fight. But don't worry, because we can waste the deserters using our lovely ambush boys. Right now, fantastic stuff. They've cleared up my ghouls for me, which is lovely, as I think that means we now have a clear line to attack their evil captain. And oh my goodness, we managed to do a fantastic critical hit as well, although he gets an additional turn. Oh, that's cheating. I know we have a 30% chance to also get an additional turn every round, but come on. Right, anyway, let's just kill this evil marauder boss, easy peasy, with our little wooden clubs. Who knew that wooden club beat gigantic warhammer? Doesn't particularly seem very fair to me, but hey, it is what it is. And a critical hit, and they've all instantaneously died. Lovely stuff. Right, now I guess we just have to finish off these incredibly weak archers using our cavalry. Right, Operation Murder Archers is a go. These archers up here are now all going to die. Good job, horsies. And they're even then going to try and run away from the horsies and in the process kill even more men, which in turn just heals the horsey boys. And I don't even know why these archers just ran into melee combat. What are they doing? AI, please. You're just going to lose all your men. Oh, no. Oh, what a shame. Well, I say what a shame. What a glorious victory. All right, the archers are now dead. Lovely stuff. And with that, it is a glorious victory for the legend of Spiff. Fantastic stuff. We didn't lose anything that we couldn't, of course, replace. Now, spend 500 gold healing our army. No, 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 I don't think so. Oh, no, 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 no. Instead, we will just summon the army out of thin air, as is only logical and smart. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've pretty much broken this entire game. Sure, we can't use the overpowered magic spells, but we can create an unstoppable army of people who repeatedly get bonus turns, do insane amounts of damage, and can take on enemies well above their actual power level, simply because they're a load of evil, mischievous boys up to no good. But the fantastic thing about them is having an army comprised of free robbers and my own perks means that basically every time I go into a battle, I'm getting like 25 to 40% more of a reward for actually completing the battle, which is just wonderful. It's absolutely broken. And because I don't have to spend any of my money actually retraining or healing troops, well, I have 24 grand in the bank. This is amazing. For a game all about managing an economy, we are doing absolutely splendidly. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's all for today's video. Of course, a huge thank you to King's Bounty 2 for actually sponsoring today's video. I mean, I was going to play the game anyway, but I'm always open to some fiscal lubrication. Now, this game did release on August the 24th. I think it's had about two patches since release, and there are probably more on the way. So whilst I personally didn't experience any crashing or bugs, it's a new release, so that's always possible, but it looks like fixes would be likely. The game's actually available on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. So hey, if you want to be a highwayman and rob people on the road with a load of bandits, you can still do that in the real world, but now you can also play King's Bounty 2 at the same time on the Nintendo Switch. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like, and heck, if you want to see more, then do consider subscribing. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons whose names are appearing on screen now. Oh, look at these majestic sausages. Thank you very much for your continued support, friends. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Goodbye for now.